if you have breeder reactors, you need to reprocess. But there's actually reasons to reprocess even without a breeder reactor. You see, when you have fission, you have two types of high-level waste products. You have the fission products, which is on this graph as the red dotted line. This is a graph of how dangerous they are, the radiotoxicity, versus time. And it's log time, so there's a lot of time here. And the line you see going across, that's the radioactivity level of the ore that was taken out of the ground. Clearly, no one is going to object if I took something radioactive out of the ground and I put something that's the exact same level of radioactivity, of toxicity, back into the ground. After all, it wasn't contained when I took it out. At least now I know where it is. So a goal in nuclear waste disposal is to get back to this natural ore level. Higher than that is probably also very good, and it is a solid form, so it really, if you keep it isolated from water, not going to go very far at all. But still, this is what we'd like. And you notice that the red dashed line crosses here at, you know, maybe 500 years, which is a long time, but not at all outside of the knowledge of our engineering. The pyramids existed a lot longer. Castles in Europe make 500 years. The problem comes with this green line. This green line are the actinides. These are the elements heavier than uranium, neptunium, plutonium, on up to americium, californium. The very heavy man-made elements can have extremely long half-lives. So when you total them, to get even down here, we're at 1,000 years, you really want to get down here, you're almost at 10,000 years. If you could separate out the actinide, heavier, transuranic elements from the fission products, you could make waste disposal much easier. And if you have breeder reactors, you have to do it anyway because the plutonium that you're making is the fuel and you need to rearrange it in the core of your reactor so you can use it up. Reprocessing has been done across the world for some time. And in some cases, they have started doing it, thinking, man, we're going to have to go to breeder reactors, so we're going to need some plutonium around. We have this plutonium around. We're going to be able to uh, make new reactors in the future. Since the curve of nuclear development did not continue at an exponential pace, there is no need for breeder reactors. There's plenty of uranium-235 today. And when we go into the future, we may indeed begin to start reprocessing again. Of course, there's another use for reprocessing, and that is to take the plutonium-239 out from the fuel and use it as a nuclear weapon. While the first nuclear weapons were uranium-235, quickly it was figured out that it's much easier to separate plutonium from uranium, it just takes a chemistry set, than it is to isotopically separate one type of uranium from another. Now, before you get too worried, I should make sure that you understand a very basic concept. In a standard reactor, okay, standard uh, light water reactor, the kind that's used for power across the world, you do make plutonium, but you make a plutonium in a mix of isotopes, 239, 240, 241 and 242. And if I take this mix of isotopes, because after all, I can separate plutonium from uranium chemically, this will not make a bomb. This is good, but if I contrast this to a breeder reactor, Okay, so my breeder reactor, when I run it, when I run a fast reactor, a reactor based on fast neutrons, 
I do predominantly only make the plutonium-239. And if I then do reprocessing and extract this, this can indeed be used to make a bomb. Doesn't mean the plant itself can blow up like a nuclear explosion. It means that this is something you have to worry about in terms of nuclear proliferation. Can you do it safely? Well, probably, because after all, there are countries that have nuclear weapons and they can control their plutonium. It's probably very difficult to steal any plutonium from the U.S. military. Hopefully it's just as difficult to steal it from other militaries. And since we've had atomic bombs since the 1940s, the only time they were used was the 1940s, so far so good on being able to contain this for reprocessing. You might say, oh, you mean from a standard reactor, I can make plutonium? Well, yes, but you get this mix. And to separate the plutonium-239 from the rest of the plutonium, so that you could make a bomb out of any old reactor's reactor fuel, well, then you need the centrifuges, you need the gaseous diffusion plant, you need the same huge apparatuses that you needed to separate the U-235 from the 238 in the first place. So there's no advantage to stealing the fuel from a reactor if you have the ability to actually do isotopic separation, well then just do it from uranium which you can easily obtain. So clearly governments must reprocess, um, but these days people aren't trying to make a whole lot of new plutonium bombs. I mean, there are a lot, but the efforts are to try to reduce them. So where does reprocessing still exist in the world? Well, here's a chart of all of the different reprocessing efforts. And you notice there's only a couple. This one, which is still going to the present day in France, 85% of their energy is nuclear power. They want to reduce the number of waste they have to bury, only burying the fission products, so they reprocess. And this one's Pakistan. Pakistan has demonstrated to the world that it has made nuclear weapons and has an active program extracting more plutonium-239 to make more of them, potentially. Now, there's some interesting things about reprocessing. And I want to tell you about a really cool type of breeder reactor that does the reprocessing inherently within the reactor. So the concept in the integral fast reactor, the IFR, is that the transuranics, the things heavier than uranium, never leave the containment building. And you use them up. You use them as fuel. Uranium-238 comes in, fission products come out. Everything else is recycled in the integral fast reactor. It really is a cool concept. This concept was pioneered in the United States, Argonne National Laboratory here in the state of Illinois. Research was stopped on it in the 1990s, but it's a great idea, and when we need it, when we need to go to more breeder reactors because maybe we have a lot more fission energy in the world, this is probably the way to do it. Let me give you just a few more details. Here is a block diagram. So we'll start over here. We have the sodium pool and we have the reactor core. And once again, we are going to pump the sodium through the core to be able to get out the heat. We'll go to a heat exchanger to where we actually will then make the steam. And that's just like the Phoenix, Super Phoenix reactors. It's a liquid metal fast breeder reactor. Here's where it gets interesting. The fuel from the core. We're going to take it out in some robotic manner and first put it into something called electro-refining. Now what does the electro-refining do? It will actually separate out from electrolysis the much heavier elements, the things that are transuranic, and all of the other elements, the fission products. Notice it's got a cadmium liner. Cadmium is a neutron absorber. This is like having a control rod right there. Because after all, you are now concentrating over here 
the uranium and plutonium and the other things that could indeed have some type of reaction. But don't worry, you've got that under control because you have the neutron absorber. And it's also still all inside the containment building. Once I've separated out the fission products, which are here, from the transuranics, I can take the transuranics and then heat this up. And any extra molten salt and other things will come off and it will leave us with these higher elements. They then can get recast into a new fuel rod. We're going to have to make up some more uranium-238. The fission products that were left over here are going to have to go out to the high-level waste repository, but only for a few hundred years, not tens of thousands. And the new fuel rod can go back into the reactor core. This is the concept for an integral fast reactor, and I think would be the next generation of commercial breeders whenever we get to that point. That's what you need to know about reprocessing.